subscribe tag tv youtube channel and press the notification button Good evening welcome to South Asia news line I am Uzma Jafri here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday the 1st of April Russia's foreign minister Lavrov praises India's stance on Ukraine calls for balanced world order Nepal's prime minister Deoba arrives in India for 3 day visit to bolster ties And Sri Lankan minister blames opposition for violent protests over economic crisis. And now for all the details. Russia's foreign minister Sergei Lavrov held a bilateral meeting with his Indian counterpart S Jay Shankar in New Delhi on Friday as Moscow tries to keep the South Asian nation on its side amid western sanctions. Lavrov appreciated India's neutral stance on the Russia-Ukraine conflict while Jay Shankar said India has always been in favor of resolving disputes through dialogue and diplomacy. Russia's foreign minister Sergey Lavrov held a meeting with his Indian counterpart S Jay Shankar in New Delhi on Friday after seeing his Chinese counterpart earlier this week as Moscow tries to keep the Asian powers on its side. amid western sanctions india and china are the only major countries to have not condemned russia's actions in ukraine during the meeting lavrov said that russia appreciates that india is taking the russia ukraine situation not just in a one sided way and called for a balanced world order jay shankar said the meeting takes place in a difficult international environment and india has always been in favor of resolving differences and disputes through dialogue and diplomacy Uh, indeed as you as you mentioned uh, this day uh, our western colleagues would like to uh, reduce any meaningful international issue to the crisis in ukraine uh, you know our position uh, we do not hide anything and we appreciate that india is taking this situation in the entirety of facts not just in a, in a one sided way Later while speaking to reporters Lavrov said that Russia will increase use of currencies such as the Indian rupee for international trade and Moscow is open to discussions with India for purchasing any Russian products we are friends he said India has bought at least 13 million barrels of Russian crude oil since late February while Australia Britain and the US have imposed outright bans on Russian oil purchases The Russian foreign minister later also called on Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in New Delhi. His visit came a day after senior US and British officials held talks with the Indian government to persuade it to avoid undermining sanctions imposed on Moscow. Moving on. Nepal's Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba arrived in Indian capital New Delhi on Friday for a 3-day official visit aimed at boosting bilateral ties. Deoba is accompanied by his spouse Arzu Rana Deoba along with a high level delegation. It is his first bilateral visit after assuming office in July last year. This trip is being considered crucial with regards to the bilateral ties between New Delhi and Kathmandu. Upon his arrival, PM Deoba visited the headquarters of India's ruling Bharatiya Janata Party and also met India's foreign minister S Jay Shankar on Friday. The Nepali Prime Minister will on Saturday meet his Indian counterpart Narendra Modi. The two leaders will jointly inaugurate cross-border passenger train services. Besides official engagements in New Delhi, Deoba will also visit the holy city of Varanasi. In news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka's tourism minister has blamed the opposition for protests in which dozens of people were arrested and injured near President Gotabaya Rajapaksa's residence over his handling of an economic crisis. Police imposed a curfew in several parts of Sri Lanka's main city of Colombo when the protests turned violent late Thursday before lifting it a few hours later. Sri Lankan Tourism Minister Prasanna Ranatunga on Friday blamed the opposition for protest in which dozens of people were arrested and injured 
near the home of President Gotabaya Rajpaksa over his handling of the economic crisis. Hundreds of protesters gathered near Rajpaksa's residence in a Colombo suburb late on Thursday before police moved in to disperse them with tear gas and water cannons. Police imposed a curfew in several parts of Sri Lanka's main city of Colombo when protests turned violent before lifting it a few hours later. Earlier, President Gotabaya's media division blamed an organized extremist group among the protesters for creating violent situation during the protest. <laughs> The island nation of 22 million people is in the midst of its worst economic crisis in years, with rolling blackouts for up to 13 hours a day because the government does not have enough foreign exchange to pay for fuel imports. The crisis is a result of badly timed tax cuts and the impact of the coronavirus pandemic, coupled with historically weak government finances, leading to foreign exchange reserves dropping by 70% in the last two years. In news from Pakistan, Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Thursday in an address to the nation rejected opposition calls to resign while he has lost majority ahead of a no-confidence vote. In a slip of tongue, he blamed United States as the foreign country backing moves for his ouster. The White House and the U.S. Department of State have rejected the accusation. Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan on Thursday rejected opposition calls for him to resign and accused an unnamed Western country of backing moves to oust him because he had visited Moscow recently for talks with President Vladimir Putin. 69-year-old Khan faces a tough parliamentary no-confidence vote on Sunday seeking to oust him from power as he faces mounting criticism over mismanaging the economy and foreign policy. In a nationally televised live address, the Premier said, whatever the result of the vote, he will come forward with more strength. जो यहां लोगों के साथ मिलके एक एक वो गवर्नमेंट जिसकी आजाद फॉरेन पॉलिसी थी उसको गिराने की कोशिश की गई खान मेट विद पुटिन द डे रशियन फोर्सेस इनवेडेड नेबरिंग यूक्रेन ही डिड नॉट ओपनली नेम द अलेज्ड कंस्पायरिंग कंट्री ही मेंशन द यूनाइटेड स्टेट्स बिफोर स्माइलिंगली करेक्टिंग इट टू अ फॉरेन कंट्री ही सेड हिज गवर्नमेंट पोजेस्ड एन ऑफिशियल डॉक्यूमेंट दैट वाज एविडेंस ऑफ द कंस्पिरेसी both the White House and the U.S. Department of State categorically rejected the accusation. Uh, well, we are closely following developments in Pakistan. And we respect, we, su we support Pakistan's constitutional process and uh, the rule of law. Uh, but when it comes to those allegations, there is no truth to them. Meanwhile, opposition leaders said Imran Khan has no safe passage but can make an honorable exit. The no-confidence vote has become increasingly difficult for Khan since he lost his majority in the parliament when his main ally MQMP quit his coalition. It could see the former cricket star ousted and the return of political uncertainty. More news from Pakistan. Pakistanis are gearing up for the holy fasting month of Ramadan, which is expected to begin on April 3. Already squeezed by inflation, they are feeling the pinch of skyrocketing prices that has shaken their household budgets, while political uncertainty also looms large. With Ramadan just around the corner, Pakistanis are thronging markets to purchase food and provisions for the holy month of fasting. Some Pakistanis already squeezed by inflation are feeling the pinch of rising prices as the soaring cost of energy and commodities internationally impact the country. Ramadan 
Ramadan this year comes amid a political crisis as Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan on Sunday faces a parliamentary no-confidence vote seeking to oust him from power. But people at the market seem more concerned about the skyrocketing prices than who rules the country. عوام کی بھلائی کے لیے حکمران سوچیں عوام کو یہ نہیں چاہیے کہ وزیر اعظم عمران خان صاحب ہے یا وزیر اعظم جو ہے شہباز شریف ہے یا وزیر اعظم عمران خان ہے عوام کو آٹا تیل گھی چینی سستا چاہیے کوئی بھی آئے جو غریب آدمی کی نیسیسری ہے ضروریات ہیں آٹا دال تیل گھی چینی اس کو جو ہے آپ نیچے نچلی سطح پہ لائیں Pakistan's top economic decision-making body has approved 8 billion rupees Ramadan relief package to provide relief to people facing high inflation rates. Under the package, at least 19 essential items will be made available at subsidized rates to the people at 6,000 utility stores across the country. Ramadan, which depends on the sighting of the new moon, is expected to begin in Pakistan on 3rd of April. the first day of fasting, a day after it starts in most other parts of the Muslim world. Moving on, a total of 41 donor countries pledged more than 2.44 billion US dollars towards the United Nations 4.4 billion US dollars appeal for humanitarian aid in Afghanistan, the world body said on Thursday, as international concerns grew over the Taliban denying girls a secondary education. Donor countries pledged 2.44 billion US dollars towards the United Nations 4.4 billion dollar appeal for humanitarian aid in Afghanistan. Joyce Simsua, UN Deputy Emergency Relief Coordinator, said on Thursday after a high-level pledging conference. Earlier, UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres appealed for donors to provide unconditional funding, saying that 9 million Afghans faced famine and that families were selling children and organs to survive. Guterres also called for the reopening of schools for all students in Afghanistan without discrimination. Joyce announced that $2.44 billion was promised at the talks during which Western donors including the United States, the European Union and Britain strongly criticized the Taliban decision to deny girls secondary education. I am pleased to announce that today 41 donors pledged more than 2.44 billion US dollars for the humanitarian response in Afghanistan and neighboring countries. The United Nations says funds under the appeal, three times the amount requested in 2021, go directly to aid agencies and none are channeled through the de facto authorities. The humanitarian situation in Afghanistan has deteriorated since the Taliban takeover in August and the economy has all but collapsed. As many as 200,000 olive ridley sea turtles have flocked to a seashore in India's Odisha state for mass nesting. To protect the turtle eggs, the State Forest and Environment Department has enforced restrictions on the movement of fishing boats and other activities near the site. Tens of thousands of endangered olive ridley turtles arrive at a seashore in Brahmapur city of India's eastern Odisha state for the annual nocturnal mass nestling. Odisha is well known as a mass nesting site for the olive ridley turtles in India. Over 200,000 turtles cross ashore from the Bay of Bengal to lay eggs on the seashore. Every year, the turtles visit the coast for nesting from January to April in India. The State Forest and Environment Department has enforced restrictions on the movement of fishing boats and other activities near the site to ensure safe nesting. Total 242,138 turtles uh, they have come and uh, we are uh, closely monitoring what is happening and we will be uh, definitely ensuring that uh, no problem occurs during mass nesting. According to the World Wild Fund for Nature, marine turtles have been around for over 100 million years. However, their numbers have plummeted due to the impact of humans either through hunting or entanglement in fishing nets. 
Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.